So is this EV worth fixing? So I fix lots of Zoe's, do motor repairs, things like that. But this one has really got me questioning whether it is worth it. So this is a 2016 Renault Zoe. Unfortunately, it is the smallest of the battery sizes. So the range on this is around 80 miles, a little bit more in the summer, a little bit less in the winter. From just after when this car was made, about six months later, they brought out the bigger battery size. But this is the smallest. We can't really change that easily. So what faults has it got? So I got this from a lady um, and it has a fault with the motor where if you drive it enough, the um, position sensor on the motor gives you a fault. It was diagnosed and she's told she needs a new motor. The motor from Renault is three and a half thousand pounds. The value of this car as it stands, it's not in a great condition. Um, it's got a scrape there. The seats inside are not too good, etc. The value of this car realistically is about £3,000, I reckon. Maybe a bit more, maybe a bit less. Values have gone down recently. It's also got a fault with the air conditioning, air conditioning compressor. So these have a heat pump. So the AC compressor is used for heating and cooling of the cabin, also cooling of the battery, really big loop. To be honest, the air conditioning compressor is a bit undersized. They run up to about 20 bar and they're a known weak point. Those compressors are £1,000 plus that from Renault. So the lady got quotes to fix the car, it was absolutely massive, not really worth it. Even at an independent EV specialist, like a Hebra garage, you're realistically looking at 3,000, give or take, to fix those faults. Depends whether you can rebuild the motor, put new bearings in it, which I've done before, or whether you have to source another motor, but it easily equals the value of the car. This car has a battery lease, so you pay monthly for the rental of the battery to Renault. You can buy it out, but obviously that value is not ingrained within the car because that's not owned. You have to pay that rental. It's good because Renault will keep fixing the battery, but obviously if you have other faults, then it's not so good, especially when it comes to scrapping the car because that's another story with trying to finish the battery lease. Bit of a nightmare there. So just having a look at this car, making sure we know what faults it's got. So when we start, we're not gonna have any other issues. And it has got another fault. And it's got a fault code for this fan not working. Um, so it's got a an air-cooled motor, so the air goes down there and through the motor and then is exhausted at the back of the motor and down through the under tray through a hole. Air-cooled motor. The fan itself is actually working. So there's an issue with this power supply. That's the relay that switches it on. The relay is fine. There's power at the relay. It's that the relay is not being switched on. So just checking where that's powered from. That comes from a fuse box. The fuse box is actually controlled by CAN. Swap the fuse box, still doesn't work. So we're looking at more time, an expense on this car, and the value of repairs, even using second-hand components and independent garage rates and non-dealer rates, it's already over the value of the car. The crazy thing was, the lady who had it, she decided she was going to scrap it because the repair cost was too high. Absolutely fine. Tried to get out of the battery lease, but Renault wanted to charge her £1,400 to give the battery back because they said she has to pay for the diagnostic check to make sure the battery is in a suitable condition to be shipped back to France. She has to pay them the labour to remove the battery at the Renault garage and pay them the shipping back to France which seems a bit crazy because she didn't pick the car up from France. But that's what they said, so they quoted her £1,400. She would also have to pay the transport to put the car on a truck to take it to Renault, and then when they were finished, get a truck to take it to a scrapyard or get a scrapyard to pick it up. So loads of time, expense, and hassle. So the lady gave me the car on the basis that I took over the battery lease. And I can do these kind of repairs. So I thought, okay, that's not too much of a problem. Motor, air conditioning compressor, I've rebuilt motors. That's okay, it's worth doing, <laughs> just about worth doing when the car's free. But I'm not sure this car is worth fixing. The real question is, should we try harder to fix EVs because of the sort of stored carbon that's within this vehicle? We know that EVs take more elements to build, more um, rare elements, more sort of emissions to build in the first place. So does that mean we should spend additional resources when it comes to fixing them? It's better for the environment, 
that this car stays on the road because it does have less emissions per mile but it's done nearly 67,000 is that enough or should we spend extra time and extra effort to keep this car on the road just because it's an EV or should we just complain to Renault because they make it so blooming hard to fix the damn things so to do the motor on this one this whole stack's got to come out it doesn't just come out the bottom you have to take the whole front end off the car and it's about 10 hours to get that stack out and back in again you've got to break that stack down and then obviously you can then swap the motor out so having everything having the stack out and having the control box off the reduction gear off and the motor just sat there on the floor absolutely crazy amount of time and that's the way they've designed it many of the jobs on the zoe require that stack coming out and just require an absolutely massive amount of time concern is we don't want to do that job and then find that we've got another fault that just makes it um, an even longer job having done 15 hours work if we can rebuild the motor so it takes about two three hours to put bearings in the motor and do a nice job on that yeah conditioning compressor as well we can kind of change that as we're going along with everything else but is it worth it so just having a look at this car this seat has gone a bit moldy in the meantime this car's been sat there it's got a little bit damp the side of that seat has kind of collapsed quite common on the zoe's and not that tidy inside a few scrapes and things a bit worn you can see it's not probably been treated that well maybe but what do you think is it worth it general conditions not you know not too bad it's gone a bit green but what should we do should we spend extra effort fixing evs or should we just moan at the manufacturers who make them so hard to fix the architecture of an ev is really simple it's got a big battery it's got a motor it's got a controller it's got all of those safety stuff, but that's all shared with any other car, you know, like airbags and braking systems, lots of that. Brakes are a little bit different because of the motor, because of the regeneration, but lots of the control of that is very similar. Lights and hazards and all that kind of stuff. But should we complain to manufacturers that these cars are so hard to fix? And what do you think? What am I gonna do with it? It's sort of easier to fix it in one way because you don't have the issue with the battery lease. And I would rather it stays on the road, but what's the point you reach? You know, where is that point where it's really not, not worth it? Let me know what you think. All right, catch you later.